I know that not everyone will agree with my decision, but I hope it is a further step uh, towards finality in this conversation. We begin with a developing story here at five o'clock surrounding Oregon's death penalty. Oregon Governor Kate Brown announced she will grant clemency to all of Oregon's death row inmates. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter and I'm David Molko. The move means the governor plans to commute their sentences to life in prison without the possibility of parole before she leaves office. Let's bring in Kyle Aboshi in the newsroom with the details here. Kyle, that clemency order takes effect on Wednesday and will leave the state without anyone facing execution. With the stroke of a pen, Oregon's governor will effectively clear death row. The 17 inmates currently awaiting execution in Oregon will have their sentences commuted to life in prison without the possibility of parole. So I believe that there are many Oregonians that share my values, that it is um, inequitable, immoral, and doesn't make sense for the state to take a life, particularly when it is irreversible. Although the death penalty is legal in Oregon, the state hasn't executed anyone since 1997. Throughout her seven years as governor, Kate Brown has continued a moratorium on executions that her predecessor, former Governor John Kitzhaber, put in place. Oregon's death penalty was further curtailed in 2019 when Governor Brown signed Senate Bill 1013, which substantially shortened the list of crimes that could qualify as aggravated murder, the only crime for which prosecutors can seek the death penalty in Oregon. In an interview with KGW's Pat Doris, Governor Brown explained her decision to commute Oregon's death row. A couple of things. Number one, um, it is immoral. Uh, justice is not served by the state taking a life. Secondly, its impact is inequitable, uh, depending upon where you live in the state and in this country. And third, it doesn't make sense. Um, it doesn't prevent violent crime, and it costs taxpayers thousands, millions of dollars. Brown's commutation means none of Oregon's current death row inmates could be executed even if a future governor were to end the moratorium, which is an unlikely scenario, at least for the time being. Governor like Tina Kotek has said she'll keep the moratorium in place. Nationwide, 23 states have abolished the death penalty, while three states, including Oregon, have halted executions through a governor-imposed moratorium. We're told the state has reached out to victims' families, letting them know that the killer sitting on death row and facing execution will have their sentence commuted to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And I imagine we're going to hear from some of those families in the coming days. Thank you, Kyle. Let's bring you an update now from Southeast Portland's Cleveland High, where classes were canceled today after a 16-year-old student was shot. Monday afternoon outside the school. Now, this is the third shooting outside of Portland High School in just the last three months. Police say the teenager walked into a local hospital with non life threatening injuries expected to be OK. But counselors and a student support team are at the school today to connect with any students who want to talk about what happened. Portland Public Schools superintendent also said in a statement in part, quote, we are hopeful that our city will come together and work collectively to resolve the gun violence epidemic that is plaguing our community. No word from police on any arrests. A poker game turned violent at a Le Center casino. Four people were stabbed and the suspect is now in custody after a chase with police. This all happened late last night in what appears to be a random attack. John Goodwin explains what went down. It was late Monday night when a game of poker turned into a crime scene at a La Centra casino. We had a bunch of agencies that responded, uh, deputies from the sheriff's office, Ridgefield Police Department, uh, College Tribal Police, all responded up there. Multiple 911 calls came in just before midnight for multiple stabbing victims at the Last Frontier Casino. And what they, they, they found was a pretty um, kind of rapidly unfolding scene where they had multiple people out bleeding, um, and the suspect had apparently left. Chris Skidmore with the Clark County Sheriff's Office says according to witnesses, the attack was completely unprovoked. They say the suspect, 41-year-old Scott Harmeyer of Vancouver, stabbed three people at a poker table with a hunting knife. He then walked outside and stabbed a fourth person in the parking lot before driving off. About 15 minutes later, a Clark County deputy spotted Harmeyer's car on I-205. They were able to get behind it. They tried to stop it. 
the vehicle fled, so they initiated a pursuit based on everything that we had with that situation. Um, and that pursuit went on for about five and a half minutes. Uh, they were able to take advantage of the vehicle slowing down. Uh, they did a uh, pursuit immobilization technique, which is essentially they spun the car out in order to get it stopped. The chase ended on Patton Parkway, and the suspect was taken into custody. The Last Frontier posted a statement to their Facebook page Tuesday saying in part, an unprovoked and surprise attack occurred at our casino involving our customers. The suspect in question is in custody with the Clark County Sheriff's Department, and the Sheriff's Department is undertaking an active investigation in the matter. Harmeyer faces four felony counts of first-degree assault. All four victims are expected to survive. Three of them have already been released from the hospital. Yeah, I think that's the important thing is it looks like uh, all the victims are going to survive and, and, and you know not have kind of sometime long-term deficit or anything related to that. In La Center, John Goodwin, KGW News. Tonight, a family is pleading for a murder suspect accused of killing his girlfriend to turn himself in. 27-year-old Catherine Mulbach was found dead Friday afternoon in Powell Butte Nature Park. Her boyfriend, 43-year-old Jose Caraballo, is accused of her murder. And Portland police say they think he has left the area. Now, we've showed you this photo of Caraballo and his distinctive tattoos. Authorities say he has family connections into California and Mexico. Today, we spoke with Mulbach's sister. She says her family had just started to understand how unhealthy, in their words, the relationship between the two was. We're hurting. And right now, our focus for Catherine is to find uh, Jose and bring justice to her, um, for her and for her children. Family has started a GoFundMe to help support Mulbach's two young children. Crime Stoppers is also offering a $2,500 reward for information leading to Carabayo's arrest. Counties in Washington's 3rd Congressional District are getting ready for a recount in the coming days. Republican candidate Joe Kent requested the recount after losing to Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez. The Secretary of State's office reported Glusenkamp Perez won by 2,600 votes, which is not enough to trigger an automatic recount. So Kent's campaign has to pay for it. Each county in the district will have to participate in the process. Got an update this evening on Measure 114. That is the one Oregon voters approved last month requiring a permit to purchase a gun and one put on hold by a judge in eastern Oregon last week. Let's bring in Blair Best. Blair, this was back in court again this afternoon, and it sounds like the judge is still pressing pause. David, as of this afternoon, the permitting requirement under Measure 114 is still on hold. The judge in Harney County ruled it would continue to be blocked indefinitely. As for the ban on high capacity magazines, the judge just told the court he will issue his ruling on Friday at noon. Now we watched the hearing in eastern Oregon play out to Day on a web stream from the courtroom. It started at 9 a.m. and just wrapped up moments ago. The courtroom was full and many more were watching online, showing just how heated this issue has become. In court, attorneys for the state said the gun permitting system required by Measure 114 is still not ready to go. Harney County Circuit Court Judge Robert Rascio ruled the delay will remain in place until he receives written notice from the state that they're ready. He will then hold a hearing within 10 days of that notice. Just to note, I'm a single judge over two counties, the only one in Oregon, and so I'm moving uh, mountains to make sure that you have an opportunity to be heard, because I understand this is very important to the people of Oregon. All afternoon, the judge heard arguments about the second controversial part of Measure 114. That's the ban on magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. Now, one gun shop owner in Burns testified that if the capacity limit were to go into effect today, he wouldn't be able to sell his store's handguns, since many, once sold, could easily be tampered with to hold more than 10 rounds. How would that work? You just drill the rivet out. It's Simply, I mean, you, you could do it potentially even with a pocket knife. Those rivets are aluminum, and you can you can just scratch it out of there with a pocket knife. And with a hand drill, it takes less than three seconds. Again, the judge's ruling on banning more than 10 rounds of ammunition is expected this Friday. The next hearing on this measure, where they'll talk about background checks at, a, at gun shows, is scheduled for 10 a.m. on December 23rd. The court will issue a ruling on that piece by 5 p.m. January 3rd. Laurel.